Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for checking in with us. Dave here at Gertens. Today we're doing another Q&A on pre-emergence, lawn seeding in the spring, some mole and vole damage, and any other questions that you guys may have. So if you have any questions, just put them down below and we'll, we'll go, with, go from there. Uh, but we'll go with the first question, go ahead. Yep, so our first question is talking about crabgrass. Can you give a little intro to that and if there's any products you would recommend? You bet, so the first question is uh, crabgrass. Uh, what, what, sh what should we use for prevention? And once you have it, what do you do? Uh, so the short answer is a crabgrass preventer fertilizer is one option. Uh, this is something that uh, creates a vapor barrier in the soil and it doesn't allow weed seed or grass seeds to kind of take uh, to, to germinate and come up through the soil. Uh, it's a vapor barrier. Um, that vapor barrier can be penetrated if you were to dig in there or do a core aeration. So it's not forever. Um, not all crabgrass preventers are created equal. Ours has about 90 days of life in it. Uh, it's got a uh, active ingredient of dimension in there as well. So even if you don't get it down in time, it's going to kill. So it's post, pre and post emergent. Um, this is one option. Uh, we also have, for those folks out there, there's not many of you, but some people don't want to fertilize as well as, as do a pre-emergence. So for those folks, we have this product. It's just crabgrass preventer. There's no fertilizer in there. And um, it's, it's, for the most part, the same active ingredients. There's a little bit of a difference though. So uh, it's for those folks that want no fertilizer. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it comes up in the spring, crabgrass, and... Uh, uh, the, the, the secret number is 54 degrees for soil temperature. That's the magic number where seed decides to germinate. Uh, not air temp, but soil temp. And so once it hits that threshold for about five days consecutive, three, four, five days, somewhere in there, it starts to germinate seed. So the same can be said about weed seed and broadleaf weed seed and crabgrass and invasive grasses, quackgrass, you name it. Also good seed like our lawn seed. So that this this animal is designed to snuff out any kind of seed. So it's a very timely product. And uh, if you are thinking of doing spring seeding, you're gonna wanna do that before this. You're gonna wanna drag your feet about two, three, four weeks and then do this uh, application and do your seeding first. But that, we're a little ways away from that. But uh, yeah, so crabgrass prevention is kind of a, a sticky situation people ask the million dollar question every year when can i put it down the short answer is i would say late april mid to late april is kind of your best window uh, an old wives tale is uh, it was when the lilacs start to bloom there's actually some truth to that don't wait too long because you might miss that um, and uh, so it's a timely product again um, if you go too early you're going to peter out on the tail end it won't be protecting into the fall because seed germinates all season long it's not just the spring um, if you go too late, that crop, that bumper crop of weed seed, broadleaf weed seed is going to come up uh, in the spring and you'll be playing catch up the whole time. If you do already have it, so this is a preventative measure for the future. If you already have it, we do have this product here. It is a, uh, it's, it's for people that already have crabgrass, it's a killer. So there's no fertilizer in this, it's just a hose end sprayer. And this is something that you can use for after you are you, you already have it um, and also covers a lot of broadleaf weeds so uh, kind of a long-winded answer for your question but that's kind of the 101 on uh, crabgrass prevention perfect um switching topics if someone had street repairs last year and the sod was laid it turned brown in the drought is there any way to save that yeah so the question is how do you repair um, seed or sod that that was kind of uh, beat up during the during the drought last year that's a tough one um, if, if you have if you're dealing with sod and you're able to pull up on that tar that, that carpet of turf if you're able to pull up on it it's not rooted it is dead the only way to get rid of that is to mulch mulch it up grind it up with a rototiller create create kind of a natural fertilizer it's just nitrogen at that point or just remove the whole carpet entirely and get rid of it and then do your seeding. If you try to seed on top of a sod layer, what you're going to do is it's going to germinate, it's going to come up, but it's not going to linger. It's going to peter out and die eventually. The, the seed needs to hit the soil, not, not a piece of turf. Um, with regard to seed, yep, if you have dead patches, just rake off that dead thatch. 
uh, dead, dead grass, and then do some reseeding. And we have every seed dynamic you can think of here. Whether you have a dog, you're on a slope, you have sun, you have shade, you have uh, high salt, whatever. We have something for everybody here. Um, one question from Facebook. TK asked about fertilizer that's animal safe. Yes, so we do have uh, organic fertilizers here. So the question is, do you have any animal safe fertilizers? We do have some organic fertilizer options. Uh, down here below, we have a corn gluten option. This is a, a natural uh, pre-emergent, it's corn gluten. Um, this comes from Cannon Falls, Minnesota, so it's local, so we like that too. Uh, this is a, a natural option. It is OMRI certified, so it is organic. And um, corn gluten does the same thing. It's not as strong as some of our traditional fertilizers, but it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit safer for, for dogs and little kids and that sort of thing. But uh, um, that's an option. Um, we also do have a weed killer option that um, is, is not a fertilizer per se, but um, we do have some options for organic weed killing too. Perfect. Um, if someone has a bare spot in their lawn, is there a timeline for seeding? Yeah, so the question is, if there's a bare spot in your lawn, when should you do your seeding? It kind of goes back to that 54 degrees soil temperature. That's kind of the magic number you want to look for. And to find that out, you can either go online. That's what we do here. We just track it online through the uh, Minnesota Department of Ag. Or you can go through the University of Minnesota, the extension. Um, or you can call them, or you can buy a soil thermometer. We have those here too. And just stick it in the ground, kind of watch your temperatures. But we're looking at about a three inch, two to three inch depth. That's what you're, you don't need a six inch depth, but um, uh, kind of just track that soil temperature. That's the ideal for seed to germinate. Once we hit that or warmer, that's a good time to do your seeding. Anything before that, it's just going to sit there. Uh, it could wash away with, with rain and snow or melt um, and uh, birds will pick at it. So you, you don't want to do it too early. Um, but yeah, you can just wait till that soil temperature warms up. Again, that's going to be mid to late April. Um, early part of May is a good time too. Uh, but get that seed down and uh, come in and we'll take care of you. Uh, we'll, we'll find the right one for you. If someone is ready to sow grass, um, but they have a slope, how would they go about that? You bet. So the question is, if you have a slope, how do you deal with seeding? Because a lot of times the rain and mother nature will just kind of wash that away. It can happen in a single rain. And then all that, all that, all that seed is gone. So to kind of combat that, there's two ways. If you have a gradual slope, kind of a, a, a shallow slope, you can do this stuff. It's a, it's a, basically it's a pen mulch. It's recycled newspaper pellets. And it's um, something that you sprinkle out over your seed and then you spritz it with water. And what it does is it kind of grows into like a carpet and it's a green, carpet looking cover and it keeps birds out of it it keeps the wind from getting it blowing it away it keeps it from washing again this is not for steep hills or steep slopes but more of a gradual if you're more in the or more of a steeper slope then you're going to jump to this um, a straw blanket type of deal any type of blanket really um, some people use burlap some people use a straw some people use those green roll-up mats um, you put this down over your seed you staple it down with sod staples you water daily for two to three weeks. Once, once that seed starts to poke through, get about two inches high, there, it's held together with a fish line netting. It's hard to see in there. I don't know if Terry, if you can get in there, but there's a fish line netting in there. And that, that, that netting can do a couple of things down the road. If once that seed starts to poke through, germinate and poke through, you want to remove that netting. If you don't, it can clog up your mower. It can snag your mower down the road. It can also choke out your grass. So you want to try, it's in your best interest to get rid of that. The only time people want to leave that in is if they have a very steep slope and they have no intention of mowing that area ever. Um, you can leave it in there to prevent erosion. So those are some options you can do for very, very steep slopes. Perfect. On the topic of mowing, um, some people are asking about low mow grass. Can you talk a little bit about that? You bet. So walk with me. We're going over here. So. Uh, what they're talking about is the four fescue low grow mix. Uh, we call it the no mow. It's kind of a misnomer. You can mow it. If you did, it'd only be about two, three times a summer. It's, it grows extremely slow. That's kind of why they call it that. Um, it's not that it doesn't grow. It does grow, but it, it's extremely slow. If at top out it, at about 10 inches and um, uh, it, at that point it starts to kind of fall over 
And at the end of the season, I would suggest weed whipping it or weed whacking it down so that you don't get snow mold in the spring. Um, don't just let it go, even though you don't want to mow it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a four fescue. Um, so there's four fescues in there. They're, they're kind of a sunshade loving. Uh, I think there's one rye in there too. Uh, but it's a great uh, drought tolerant, low maintenance grass seed. And we suggest it for people with ditches, hillsides, people with uh, properties that they don't necessarily want a golf course looking type of deal. Uh, they don't want to keep it up. So it's a great, it's a great option. And then while we're back here, yeah. do you have any grass seed recommendations for semi-shaded areas? You bet. So the question is semi-shaded areas, do we have any seed to kind of accommodate? We do. So we have kind of a, a wall of shade here. And as you go to the right, it gets more and more dense shade. Let me start right back here with premium sunshade mix. That's kind of a 50-50 sunshade, kind of equal sunshade ratio. The next one over to the right is called premium shade mix. That's going to be like two hours of daylight and uh, direct sun and then heavy shade thereafter. The next one over is the premium dense shade mix. That one is going to be for no direct sun at all throughout the day, just heavy shade. That's the one I would suggest to you, the, the, the question person. Um, and then the ultra dense shade is, uh, we nicknamed that one the cave. That one is very dark extremely dark conditions that's for ideal for under maple trees where there's heavy canopy or if you're sandwiched between houses and you get no good light maybe some filtered light at best um, that's a good option there so uh, once again we do have a, a sunshade dynamic for everybody's situation if you come in we'll walk you through it and we can take a look at your pictures on your ipad or on your camera and uh, we can kind of assess what you're dealing with Back to the organic topic, are there any organic methods for pre-emergence? Yeah, so pre-emergence, that's kind of, we kind of went over that a little bit earlier. Um, that, that's going to be the corn gluten down here below. That's a pre-emergent natural. Um, and it just kind of snuffs out that seed, doesn't allow it to kind of germinate and take hold. And uh, like I said earlier, it's not as strong as our traditional fertilizers. This one has 90 days of life in it that one down there has about 45 days of life in it and then weeds are going to start coming back or you're going to have to switch to a different fertilizer or something like that um, another question from facebook from lori lori asked what is the best or toughest grass to hold up dog traffic you bet thank you lori so the question is which grass seed would be best for uh, dog traffic you know they're all pretty much equal in that regard we do have a uh, wear and tear mix uh, it's a heavy traffic seed. Um, a lot of times athletic fields use it. Um, that would be the one I'd suggest because it, it's, it's a lot of ryegrass. Um, it's going to tolerate kids and dogs tearing up around uh, a little bit better than the other ones. But as far as susceptibility to dog urine, there's, they're all pretty much equal. Um, there, you're going to have to do, use a lot of water. Uh, to kind of dilute that that stuff and then uh, either reseed or throw down some gypsum which we talked about on Wednesday and uh, so there are some ways to kind of get around the the dog patches so uh, but there really isn't a, a seed that sticks out okay. um, another question about neighboring lawns if a neighboring lawn has dandelions is there any way you can prevent them to coming to your lawn you bet. So that's a great question. So the question is, uh, if your neighbor has lots of dandelions or weeds, um, um, they want the natural lawn um, because they want to protect the pollinators, which I totally understand. Um, we love our bees and they love dandelions. And, and, and I, I like to coexist with dandelions. The reason why is because the pollinators, you know, the butterflies, the, the honeybees, all these things, they need to coexist with us. So I like to leave my dandelions. I do treat them. But I, use, uh, I, I, I treat them later in the season after they've kind of done their thing. Um, they're easy to kill. They're not like plantain and creeping charlie and clover, some of those more harder to kill weeds. So dandelions are easy to pick off. Don't panic. Once the snow leaves, the dandelions start knocking. Don't panic. You don't have to get out there right away. We do have broadleaf weed, uh, weed and feed uh, fertilizers. That's our step two in our fourth step program. Uh, we do have that for you folks. Try to slow down on that. You know, uh, the, the dandelions are not that, not all that bad. But if you have a neighbor that just refuses to do anything, or they're like they're lazy, um, we do have some organic products that you could suggest to them, your neighbor. And that this is this this is one of them. It's a high iron um, 
derived uh, from, from nature product. It's, uh, it's, it's designed to uh, go after any kind of broadleaf, really. The only thing I will say about this is that it's a spot treatment. Do not broad spray this. This will also hurt your good, your good stuff too. So it's kind of like, uh, like Roundup for organic. So it's gonna go after your grass too. So be careful, you can burn, burn stripes and holes in your lawn too. So you wanna just be kind of surgical with this product, but it is a natural way of, of handling it and you're not throwing chemical out there. Um, so there are some options. Um, but uh, they in, encourage them to come in too. We can we can walk your neighbors through some of our solutions too. They may not be aware. Awesome. Um, a couple of questions are about the JRK four step lawn fertilizer. Could you talk about that? You bet. So the the question is, what is the four step JRK program? Um, I'm just going to cheat real quick and let the let the pamphlet kind of we, we sell these or I'm sorry we give these out for free. These are a turf booklet. Um, it's our little Bible here, and here on page one you have. The four-step program. I don't know if you can see that, but on there it has the dates of when to apply each one. So we spell it out for you. And in there, uh, it talks a little bit briefly about each product, what it does, when to do it. Um, it's color coded so you can't screw up. Uh, they're even numbered one, two, three, four. And uh, what I do is I I tell people just tack this up on your garage wall so you have, always have it and you can just kind of glance at it and you know when it's when it's time um, if for some reason you wanted to do some seeding in the spring um, you can you can do that before step one you'll have to do that before step one because this has 90 days of life which brings you all the way through into August almost so this is a great four step program you can find a four step program pretty much anywhere you go I like ours better because it's tailored for Minnesota lawns. What that means is there's dimension in ours as well. Dimension is kind of a, a, a layman's term for uh, an active ingredient that I can't pronounce. Uh, and that uh, has kind of a post-emergent killing uh, factor in it. So that's why I like our four-step program. But um, it's on sale here at the store and come check it out. And uh, so yeah, four-step program. If someone's looking to deter moles and voles from their lawn, are there any recommended products? You bet. So the question is, moles and voles in your lawn and garden, how do you deter them? How do you get rid of them if you already have them? Uh, so th we do have a product. Uh, it's, uh, it's called um, Mole Max. And this is designed for ground burrowing creatures. Um, on this bag you have... Um, ground squirrels, you have gophers, you have uh, voles, you have moles, and we even have the uh, armadillo because they're <laughs> everywhere. Um, and um, uh, this is castor oil pellet. It's, uh, it's uh, something that you can broad broadcast out in a broadcast spreader. Um, there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. What you wanna do is start on this side of the problem and flush them outwards. So day one, do a third, day two, do another third, and day three, kind of finish it off. Work your way outwards. If you do a perimeter, you'll box them in. If you do the whole thing all at once, you'll confuse them and you may not get rid of them. So you wanna try to escort them out the right way. Um, this is a, a fairly natural product, so not, not chemical. Um, we have this in a shaker jug as well. If you don't wanna use the big bag, you can use this around in your rocks or your foundation area around your house. Um, how do you know if you have moles or voles? So moles are more underground. They are, uh, we can consider them meat eaters. They eat grubs and worms. And so you'll find volcanoes of dirt in your lawn. Uh, that's evident. They are territorial, so it could be one doing all the damage, um, or you could have a few. They're about the size of a small football, um, and they're pretty nasty looking. If you have a vole, they are like a small field mouse. I don't know if you can see that or not. And uh, they are more above ground and they eat the tops of the grass blades all winter long be beneath the snowpack but above your turf. They just kind of burrow all winter long and they make those little channels in your lawn. And uh, once the snow leaves, they'll leave your lawn and they'll move into your landscaping and your hardscape area. And then they'll, they'll, they can girdle around your shrubs and trees. And so they, they don't go away. They're still there, but they're, they kind of moved into your rock beds and they're chewing on shrubs and trees. So it's in your best interest to kind of get, get, those, get it down everywhere in your yard. So another long-winded answer, but I think it, it kind of covers it. Um, is there any 
is there any way to know when they're finally gone or is it just you don't see them anymore you know there's no way and they can come back the big big tell is that if you live near a wooded area or a ditch or a pond or a park uh, or a grove of trees or something like that chances are that's where they came from and that's where you want to push them back to so as long as that setup is there that rough area they're gonna probably be there um, so yeah unfortunately it's an ongoing battle probably every year you're gonna have to do this at least once maybe twice once uh, uh, here in the spring and then another time before the snow sets in the in the fall or early winter um, kind of send a message that we don't want you in this area so yeah it's 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 kind of a game of cat and mouse with them Perfect. Um, are there any final products or topics you'd like to touch on you know, the, uh, the only thing I will say is that just watch your soil temperatures. That's a big, a big uh, deal for the crabgrass preventer. Um, seeding, we, we carry seed all, all, win all, all season long. So if you, uh, if you miss your windows, come in, we can take care of you. And uh, uh, keep in mind that four-step program. Uh, we also offer an organic four-step program. It's made by Sustain. Uh, like I said, they're, 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 they're a local company. And so they have a four-step organic option also. Um, and uh, that's about it. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions, come on in. Also refer to our website. There's tons of information there. Go to our tabs on there, the, the Garden Scoop. Uh, lots of uh, good information on there. But uh, thanks for checking in with us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.